our dice. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 34 in our series, NerdDice.com, where we build a Ruby on Rails 7 application to manage tabletop role-playing. And as you can see, our backlog is dwindling down here. We are uh, nearing our next retrospective, and then uh, we'll wind up uh, beefing that backlog up in force. Uh, but before we do that, there are a couple other items I want to um, take care of. And the first one is going to be refactoring our rubocop.yaml files to enable new cops and remove unnecessary config. So I had added this a while back and just getting around to it now. Uh, so the I'll show you what happens in the current state of the application. We run Rubocop, it will tell you all of the new files that are, the, the new cops that you can enable um, kind of in a warning text here. And as you can see in the past, we go to the rubocop.yaml file here. This is the one for this project. Um, we can see that there are a bunch of these like new in version whatever uh, comments and stuff like that where things have been pasted in from the, uh, th th those warning messages. So what my goal is here is to get rid of those uh, new and whatever default enabled cops and enable the new cops by default and then we'll also um, get, get rid of those unnecessary config items and try to make sure that we're at parity in terms of how we do it. So first there is a command line option that you can do through a cop dash D or you can do dash dash debug. I'll do it that way first and then probably do the quicker way afterwards. Uh, so this kind of tells you what's going on in Rubocop and we've got a bunch of, um, you can see earlier up there, some um, argument errors that occurred. And so let's see what's happening there. It's only showing up when you run it in debug mode. There we go. Argument error, unprocessable file. Uh, it's looking in our temp cache, uh, bootsnap compile cache. So. Uh, those aren't places we want to check for Rubocop anyway, so uh, that's a good use of the debug here. We're gonna go here and just like we did vendor, we're going to do temp and get those excluded from our uh, directories that Rubocop tries to run on. So hopefully there'll be fewer of those and it, it ran much faster in debug mode this time because now it's just saying which files it's scanning I hope let's see if there are any other still dealing with some unprocessable files those are old so we got rid of temp yeah so these are the new ones just telling which ones we're doing here. Talking about loading caches, scanning, all that stuff. So that, that gets us to a more manageable section here. We also want, since we're running Ruby 3.2, we want to change our target Ruby version to 3.2. Make sure that we're still good from that regard. I'll run it without the debug first. So we're still good, keep that. Now we've got these 60 files, the, the, those warning messages about the um, non-enabled bugs, or not enabled, cops. So let's start dealing with those. So we can 
what we can do here is all new cups enable. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to uh, get rid of the ones that I have essentially new in whatever version. Uh, I'm just going to kind of Here, new, new. You got to be careful not to get rid of the so, so Rails enabled true. Um, some of these other ones we want to keep. Go down, get all the new ones. We want to keep any ones that are uh, have like enabled false or have exclusions or that have different config other than enabled true in them. So we'll continue down. So here would be an example of Rails present. We need to keep that because we're excluding um, bin bundle. So we'll just keep that whole block. The, the enabled is probably uh, redundant, but um, these ones don't have the the new comments in them, so I'll leave them alone. That has uh, variable content. That has enforced style config, you need to keep that around. These ones are new. I think you get the idea. If, if I ha come back on anything notable as I'm pruning these out, I'll um, unpause and talk through them. But I think you get the idea. Just the ones that just say new will delete out, and then I'll come back when it's done or something notable happens. All right, so I've pared this down. We're down to 317 lines. Uh, it was pretty much more of the same. So anything I've got left is stuff that didn't have a, a, a comment about new in whatever version, or it has um, exclusions that you want, or a particular style that you want to deal with, like enforce style, double quotes on uh, string literals, and all that other stuff that um, you might need non-default configuration for. And what was our, what's our current footprint of this file? So previously we had 741 lines. Now we have 318 lines for now. We need to add back in a couple more lines because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rerun Rubocop and I should expect that there will be a lot more warnings. All right, right now we've got... Um, a fairly small amount of them. So now we're going to do Rubocop and you can see that we've got far more of these because we had all these that were new in whatever version that are not um, enabled by default. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop in these two lines to our config. Actually, we've already got all cops. We don't need to comment about disabled by default because we're going enabled by default. So we'll just take those out. Um, get rid of that and run it again. So now we should, depending on whether we're, oh, we've got new offenses, which should not be surprising multiple assertions, which I want multiple assertions. So I took that one out by accident. That'll be at 
the bottom here. And this will be enabled false because I, styling wise, I like to make multiple assertions um, about things that you can operate on at once and assert several things about it. Uh, Rails mini test lets like distinguishes between the in, the number of assertions and the number of test runs, so keep that one uh, disabled. We're back to uh, to parity there, and let's make sure that nothing. I don't expect that anything would change on our. tests, but run it just to be, be sure. I'm not going to run the full um, system test suite here. I didn't change anything relevant to that. So we're confident that this is going to um, to pass and build as we need. Uh, and then whenever we do a bundle update, which we're probably going to do in the next video, uh, we look at the new uh, any new offenses that come in. We won't get those warning errors about the unenabled unenabled new cops and we'll make decisions if any uh, show up in our um, different than the style of code that's being used on this project you either make the changes or we say no I don't want to use whatever um, naming inclusive language and I'm going to disable the cop so uh, uh, one more thing so the um, how I got here so uh, I meant to do this in the very beginning of the introduction, but uh, you can go to rubocop.org, read the docs, usage, basic usage, and there are all uh, things like this uh, debug pattern, uh, the de debug command here. Um, you have the ability to, on a one-off basis, let's say you don't want the... Um, enabled um you don't want to be as defaulting about enabling stuff in your own project you can run it with enable pending cops just to see what it's going to look like before you um add them into your config file or um you can do the other direction you can disable the pending cops and see if that uh changes these things so there are a whole bunch of um interesting command line uh options here um, and you can even, is it, I was originally, so verbose, um, yeah, there's a verbose version, I think. We'll do, see what happens when we do verbose. That doesn't actually run your items but it tells you what what gems you're running and I, I think it aliases verbose uh, to verbose version there so when I was originally thinking I would look for a ver verbose command that tells me like which cops are running on any given uh, run or something like that um, that didn't quite um, at least I'm not aware of the uh, ability to do that because it would have been nice to have like this is essentially I'm refactoring things out changing to enable by default and then I've got parity in terms of I'm running these exact same set of cops before and after um, but if you if you know how to do that you can throw a comment in the channel and we'll um, probably do a video on it because that is interesting um, so now we can Take a look. Oh, I will check out a branch. Now we can get add, get commit, sign it this time. Pause and write my message. All right, I've got my commit message here. I will 
Save it. We'll push to our remote. While the build is running, we do want to make sure that the build succeeds here. Um, I'm going to, I like how that turned out. So I'm going to also add a backlog item to just the nerd dice ruby gem. Which we will see more of soon on this channel. I have some maintenance to do on it. So go to the project here. This is a classic project. And... I will just essentially copy the title. Add that, move it down in the priority. Probably there. Check on our build. It's still running, we will open a pull request into main. Create it. We'll wait for the check to complete, and presuming it does, then I will merge it. See you in a sec. All right, the build has passed. Before I do that, I want to check my commit and make sure that it is verified, which I did not do in my last pull request. Now we'll get check out main. Copy our branch name to merge. Merge feature branch. Get push. Get branch. Delete the old one and then get push origin colon branch name to delete the remote. So request is merged issue is resolved and we will see you in the next video want to create your own ruby gem but don't know where to start Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.